Okay, so now it's the time that we're going to work on controller. Now, what are controllers? Let me first explain that just quickly, not too much of taking your time. If you remember in the my modules, we go ahead and worked a little bit onto this part. So if I open up this main.go file of uh, my modules, if you closely followed that up, this is the slash route and there can be many things like slash learn, slash courses, slash pro, whatever you want to work with that. There is a method that's running there. Now, if the request is coming up of type get, and there are others as well, like post, put, delete and stuff, that this slash route, when the request get is coming up, type get is coming up, this is governed by serve home. So this is the guy who is responsible for handling this situation. And there can be many other situations based on what you want to do on a particular route. We want to work on a similar kind of situation. We'll be working on just two in this one. So let's go ahead and deal up with that. We will not be defining the routes yet. We will be defining how to handle that situation first. How we handle that situation is known as controller because that's the guy who is kind of a brain of the operation. Let's go ahead and work on with that. Now, usually these are called as controllers. And yep, you guessed it right. All these controllers usually go into a separate file. But in some of the bigger applications, even controllers go into different folders and different files. As of now, we're not gonna go that much big. Uh, let's keep it absolutely short. Remember, controllers go in their own separate file eventually. Now let's go ahead and work on with that. The first thing that I want to do with that is to call this one as serve home, home, come on, route. Now the reason why I'm saying is serve home route because if you open up your application, I don't want just a blank uh, page or an empty page or an error on this case. So if anybody visits the localhost slash or whatever the application is, I want to send some message. And for this, we're gonna go ahead and create a simple, let's call this one again as serve home. Feel free to name this method, whatever you like. I told you it is always being governed by two things, a writer and a reader. Reader is where you get the value from whoever is sending the request. And writer is where you write the response for that. In case you want to write headers or anything at all, you just go through with that way, uh, in this. Now, in the case of Golang, we always mention that what type of value it is. So we're gonna go ahead and inject HTTP dot response writer. So this is a kind of thing we have to do all the time. And this one is a request that's coming in. So in the request, usually there are some parameters that also come in. So obviously some of you might have guessed that if we want to grab just one course, we have to provide an ID of that course. So that ID is definitely going to come through uh, the URL. And this router, I told you, gives you an option to grab these values. We can do that directly via URL as well. But since this router actually gives us that option, we'll be using those options. So this is uh, a pointer, which is going to be HTTP tp dot and this one is request so there we go and this is a common practice and you have to do this all the time and common mistake uh, which a lot of people do sometimes they just misplace these things so sometimes they place request first and then the response writer please don't do that keep an eye on that okay once we have this one uh, we're gonna go ahead and say that hey this is just going to have a write uh, just like we did in the previous one it sends a slice of byte and in this case we're going to go ahead and just send up a response so this time also we're going to go ahead and wrap it up into h1 there we go and we're going to go say this is h1 and all we got to say is welcome to api by learn code online and by the way if you're using and you successfully deploy this route go ahead take a photo and put me up on the instagram Okay, so this is all easy, this is nice. We have done that uh, in the last section as well. But I want to create another route and the goal of this route or wherever this method is going to run is simple. I want to just throw up all the values from my database there. That's it, that's the whole idea behind that. So we're gonna go ahead and create a function and we are gonna call this one as get all courses. And this is where I'm breaking the convention here a little bit. I'll walk you through with that in a minute. So first, let's write that how we're going to do that. Again, we can now borrow this code up here because this would be a waste of time if I just go ahead and write that again. So there we go. Or I can create a simple snippet for myself. So whenever I need this kind of method, it can automatically generate for me. Anyways, first, I would like to go ahead and print up a message for myself that go ahead and use this one. So this one is all about get all courses. In this case, I just want to throw up the entire slice of that course up here. Now, how we do that, we definitely can do that easily. But first, I want to show you a method how you can set the headers. Because in some times, in some cases, you might want to set a special header uh, things up here. 
response is definitely one of the thing, but sometimes you need to set extreme headers, uh, explicit headers there. So in that case, uh, it also allows you not just write, but actually methods uh, which are write headers or just the headers. So we are gonna go ahead and just use the header. And then we can go ahead and use the set method on that and we can provide the value. So in this case, I'm just setting a method uh, which says, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and say the, the type of values that I'm accepting is content type. And yes, these are key value pairs. Application slash JSON. There we go. If I go ahead and save this, hopefully some of the errors will be gone. So there we go, nice and easy. And just like we have this w.header, and then we can use the set, we have the way of saying uh, set headers directly as well. And definitely there are more ways. If you'll read the documentation, you'll get a lot of it. Some, I'll discuss that up here. Now the important part is how we are going to go ahead and throw up all of the things which we have in our fake DB as a JSON. Now, if you remember, we directly have an access of this JSON. Remember, encoding JSON, we spent a couple of videos on that. You can go ahead and directly say, I want to use a new encoder. And yes, it gives us a new encoder and new decoder, basically giving us an encoder. And we want to say this encoder will be working with the writer. And you can see some of the helper methods up here. What kind of writer we are using? We are using already a writer, which is given to us by this HTTP response writer. This can go ahead and use the method of encoding whatever the value you provided up here. This is a syntax, you have to follow this one up here. Whatever you pass on up here is going to be treated as a JSON value, and it will be thrown back to whoever is making a request via this W. Get the idea? Pretty simple. So if I go ahead and uh, go ahead and just simply say a key value pair of welcome and hello world, it's gonna throw that up. But since we got up the courses up here, we are just sending all the values up here. Now, obviously I do agree that in this case, it is going to just return an empty database up here because we have nothing, but we'll take care of that while running the, make, uh, the main method. We'll just inject some of the fake database values inside the database. This process is known as seeding. And this is a common practice. Whenever we are testing or doing such kind of situation, we seed our database with some fake values so that at least we have something to work on with that. We will take care of seeding, but in a separate video itself. I think this is all what we have for this one, and let's catch up in the next video.